Hello, my name is Lassi Meronen and my presentation title is Movement Tracking by Optical Flow Assisted Inner Cell Navigation. This is joint work by me and William Wilkinson and Arno Solin at Arn Aalto University in Helsinki. Some introduction. Conventional visual inertial odometry methods fuse IMU information with a sparse cloud of visual feature points. But here we consider a visually dense deep learning based optical flow. We also incorporate ideas from probabilistic deep learning to get an uncertainty estimate for the optical flow, which can aid uh, the robustness of the measurement updates. In our setup, we have a camera recording a video for which we calculate the optical flow, which is shown here on the phone screen. The optical flow is shown in colors such that the color represents optical flow direction and then the color intensity represents the optical flow magnitude. In the optical flow, moving objects cause outliers in the global flow field, such as the child in the image and stationary objects in the view agree with the movement predicted by the IMU. Then about optical flow. Optical flow calculates the estimated movement for each pixel from one video frame to the other. And this, uh, to say that this is a dense approach means that every, for every pixel, the optical flow is calculated. And this uh, helps to use visual cues and global consistency of the image. And both horizontal and vertical movements are estimated. And here's an example video and its corresponding optical flow. Uh, we use FlowNet2 to calculate our optical flow. And this is a deep learning approach to solve optical flow as an end-to-end -end learning problem. It's a complicated structure of stacked convolutional neural networks and it requires elaborate training schedule on a synthetic data sets to, uh, to be trained properly. But after that, it generalizes very well on various test data and also all kinds of uh, real video data. We also want to get an uncertainty estimate for our optical flow and we use Monte Carlo dropout for this. Uh, this means that dropout is used during testing to obtain different outputs for a single input. And each time the same input is passed through the network, different nodes are randomly dropped out in the network to get differing outputs. And we can calculate standard deviation of these different outputs uh, of the same sample to get an uncertainty estimate. And here, uh, an example video with its corresponding optical flow standard deviation is shown. And then our extended Kalman filter setup. Uh, we have a nonlinear model for the dynamics and standard mechanization equations are used. Here, P is the position, V is the velocity, and Q is the unit quaternion representing orientation. For uh, the gyroscope measurements, we track additive bias and for the accelerate accelerometer measurements, we track both uh, multiplicative and additive bias terms. And we use automatic differentiation through checks to solve the Jacobian matrix for the EKF prediction to avoid uh, analytic solving. Uh, we use a pinhole camera model to incorporate visual information and the pinhole, pinhole camera model maps pixel coordinates to world coordinates. And here U and V are pixel coordinates, X, Y, and Z are world coordinates, K is camera uh, intrinsic matrix, R is the rotation matrix, P is translation, and comparing camera poses between consecutive frames allows triangulating points in the 3D world because the optical flow, which is here delta U and delta V, uh, tells us that change in pixel coordinates between the frames and we can expect the same world point to stay stationary. Then our measurement model of the EKF. Uh, we can calculate expected optical flow between the two, uh, between two frames and uh, we can use the triangulated points and the dynamic model camera poses to do this. 
And then we can compare this expected optical flow with the observed optical flow delta to get our measurement model. And here, uh, P cam is the camera pose, P X Y Z is the triangulated point, and delta is the measured optical flow. And this provides a nonlinear EKF measurement model where we expect that the, in an ideal case, the expected optical flow and a measured optical flow are identical. And this, uh, we can use this to make an EKF a measurement update. And we use our uncertainty as the variance term for this update. So that uh, if the measured optical flow uh, has very low uncertainty, then this update has a larger impact because we have more trust in this measured optical flow. And sparse methods usually use a long trail of frames. And here only two frames are used. And the fact that it works is surprising. Uh, but this is probably because of the robust uh, optical flow estimate of the flow net 2. Then our experiment setting. Uh, we are using an iPad Pro uh, to walk around the block in a low texture environment, uh, which is snowy. And here we have an example video capture in 10 times speed, uh, which, is, uh, which is the video from this experiment capture. And during this capture, GNSS, IMU, camera, and ARKit signals are recorded simultaneously. And ARKit is a, a visual inertial odometry method, which we use as a baseline method. And the GNSS track that is measured is uh, uh, ablated by subsampling. Here on the top left, we have the full GNSS measurement track overlaid on the map. And this, from this, uh, most of the measurements will be uh, removed for the experiments. And on the top right, we have the ARKit baseline, baseline track overlaid on a map. And we have 11 positions on the track shown. And for those positions, we have the camera view and the associated optical flow here in the images on the bottom. Then for the results. Uh, these uh, in, in the results, the blue circles are the GNSS location measurements, and they have the uncertainty as the shaded circle around them. And then the red, red track is the ARKit path, and then the colorful, colorful path is our result track. Here on the left, first we have uh, the result using IMU data fused with GNSS data, and there is some uh, considerable gaps uh, each time a GPS a GNSS measurement is observed. Here on the right, we have additional to the previous data also the dense optical flow used. And we can see that the jumps uh, each time a GNSS measurement is observed are much smaller and the drift is much less when dense optical flow is used. Here we have a uh, corresponding smoother results uh, for, for the same setups with the same data. Uh, here we can see that the differences are not very big, but for the, when the dense optical flow is used, the shape of the track is slightly better, but the scale is a little bit too small. Then we have a, a measure uh, like results without using any GNSS location data. And here, IMU data is fused just with the dense optical flow. On the left, we have the filter results. And on the right, we have the smoother results. And we can see that the uh, shape of the track is uh, recovered quite well, but, uh, but the scale is a little bit too small. Here we have numerical results compared in a table. And here, for each method, uh, a tick mark is showing which features each numbered method is including. And the root mean square error is used as the comparison metric. And we can see that the best result for the filter is achieved by the method using dense flow with the uncertainty estimates also. 
And this is significant because often the filter result is the result that has to be used, especially, for example, uh, if decisions have to be made in an online fashion. Uh, the best results for smoother is obtained when only uh, IMU data and GNSS is used, but this, this is probably because our, uh, our method with TensFlow produced slightly small scale, a slightly too small scale result, and our method is still very close to this. And it's important to notice that the only method that manages to produce any reasonable result without the GNSS data is the method with dense optical flow using uncertainty also. And then, as a recap, we noticed that learning-based dense optical flow can leverage visual cues and global consistency of the flow field to improve the flow estimates. And for dense flow, also the uncertainty can be calculated to estimate flow measurement quality in the EKF update. And the results that we saw show that learning-based flow clearly outperforms traditional feature-based flow when used in visual inertial odometry. Thank you very much for listening. And in case you have any questions, feel free to contact me at the email shown below.